Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. Good morning and Happy New Year. I'm Nicole Brady. And I'm Micah Smith. Here's the latest from Denver 7. It's a cold start to 2019. Temperatures were in the single digits for the New Year's celebration in downtown Denver. Today, temps may not even reach 20 degrees. We asked some people outside yesterday what they were doing to stay warm. Not, not too cold for you? No, not at all. These guys were born in Fairbanks, Alaska, so they're used to it. Are you guys warm enough? Well, let's try to stay as warm as we can tonight. Now, is the dog keeping you warm tonight? Yes. And we'll have Lisa with your full forecast in just a few minutes. The fate of Kelsey Barrett and Patrick Frazee's one-year-old daughter, Kaylee, may be decided on Thursday. A judge will choose who gets custody of the young girl after Frazee was charged with murdering his fiancée. Frazee faces two counts of first-degree murder and three counts of conspiracy to commit murder. In court, prosecutors suggested Frazee and accomplices may have killed Barrett during a robbery. Right now, we don't know much about the state's case against Frazee because those court documents have not been released. Kelsey Barrett was last seen on Thanksgiving Day. Her body has not yet been found. The Broncos are starting the new year searching for a new head coach after the firing of Vance Joseph following back-to-back -back losing seasons. Now the question is who will replace him. The team has already requested permission to interview several coaches including New England's Brian Flores, Pittsburgh's Mike Munchak and Chicago's Vic Faggio. John Elway says they're looking for experience. If I say we're rebuilding that sounds like an excuse. I mean, that's why I don't like to use that word, because it sounds like an excuse. Our standards are still the same. We're still going to come in, we're going to go into this offseason and be the best we can this offseason and try to get better football players and try to get it to where next year we go into training camp and we're ready to compete for, for a playoff spot. Since Elway's looking for experience, it's unlikely a college coach will be named to take over as head coach, but a younger coach is possible for the offensive coordinator role. This morning, there's a new complication in the government shutdown. Now in its 11th day, federal workers are suing the federal government for forcing essential workers to stay on the job without pay. The suit claims the government is violating the Fair Labor Standards Act. Right now, there are around 420,000 federal employees working without being paid. Federal workers are going to be penalized for not paying their bills on time when we just want to go back to work. President Trump is pushing for $5 billion in funding to build a border wall. He says he won't sign anything that keeps Homeland Security funding at its current levels. Democratic leaders Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer said in a statement the president is using the government shutdown to try and force an expensive and ineffective wall on the American people. Democrats have their own plan to reopen the government once they take control of the House Thursday. Their plan consists of two bills. The first fully funds agencies like the Interior Department and the IRS for a full year. The second extends Homeland Security funding at its current levels through February 8th, but includes no funding for a border wall. Democrats hope by splitting the bills, they'll be in a better position to negotiate with Republicans. Here's a look at the more disgusting side of the government shutdown. Right now, some national parks are keeping visiting visitors safe in areas, but staffing is so bare bones that they can't keep up with maintenance, and some of the visitors aren't helping. A number of parks are reporting issues with overflowing garbage, human waste, and illegal off-roading. At Rocky Mountain National Park, officials have closed restrooms and locked up trash bins because of human waste and other issues relating to the shutdown. Several entrances are also closed to traffic because of heavy snows that cannot be cleared by workers until the shutdown is over. And it's not just national parks that are seeing issues like this. Officials at Roxboro State Park in Littleton say there has been an increase in the amount of human waste near trails. Today, the park is hosting a workshop to address the impact we're having. It's called Leave No Trace. It starts at 10 this morning. The stock market is closed today for the holiday, but looking back on 2018, it has not been a good year on Wall Street. The extremely volatile little year was the worst for stocks in a decade. The Dow finished down 5.6 percent, the S&P 500 fell 6.2 percent, and the Nasdaq 4 percent. December was particularly dismal. The Dow dropped 8.7 percent for its worst December performance since the Great Depression. And in 2019, one piece of good news for your budget. Gas prices will be lower. According to USA Today and GasBuddy.com, the average American family will spend just under $2,000 at the pump this year, $1,991. That's $25 less than last year, and it's the first time in three years that annual gas prices are expected to drop from the year before. 
Today marks five years of marijuana legalization here in Colorado. There have been more than a billion dollars in recreational marijuana sales made in Denver over that period of time. When you add in medical sales, the total rises to more than two billion dollars. The state has collected a total of more than 740 million dollars in taxes. 160 million of that has been put toward the construction of schools across the state. Well, a lot of changes are happening in Colorado in 2019, including uh, beer laws. Today, grocery stores can start selling full-strength beer. A number of stores have already had the stronger beer delivered so they could hit the ground running as soon as they open this morning. If you plan to camp at state parks this year, you may need a reservation. 15 more parks are transitioning to a reservation-only system starting today. You can reserve spots up to six months in advance on the Colorado Parks website. And if you plan to ride an RTD bus or train, bring extra money. Today, fares increase uh, $3 for local fares, $5.25 for regional fares, and $10.25 for the A-Line train to DIA. You can read more about the changes and other changes in the law in Colorado on the DenverChannel.com. Just click on the story on our homepage. Did you get your flu shot this season? If you haven't, you may want to think about it because Colorado is seeing a big surge in flu cases. The Colorado Department of Public Health says 572 people have been hospitalized since flu season began in early October. Children and the elderly are most at risk for developing the flu. 25% of all cases were found in those older than 65, another 26% in kids under 18. The CDC says Colorado and Georgia have the highest flu risk in the country. And remember, it's never too late in the season to get your flu shot. If you've made a New Year's resolution and you're worried about sticking to it, it might help to understand what's going on in your brain that's hindering you and how you can overcome it. Um, so everybody's heard of dopamine. And, and we, we think of dopamine as kind of the pleasure drug or something, but it's actually something that's relative to your expectations, okay? You only get dopamine when something happens different than you expect. So the way this interacts with your resolutions, Professor O'Reilly says you have to change up your goals to get new rewards. Instead of telling yourself you'll lose X amount of weight this year or break your phone addiction, start with a small step in that process. You will get that dopamine hit whenever you feel like you've achieved part of the bigger picture. If you want to start the new year by taking in some fresh air in the great outdoors, Colorado Parks and Wildlife has you covered. There are more than 30 events scheduled at state parks across Colorado today as part of the First Day Hikes program. All of the events are free, but you'll still need a park pass to get inside. You can find details of the hikes right now on the Colorado Parks and Wildlife website. And today it might be a better day for snowshoeing uh, hey. than a hiking, right? Good point. It is cold, and we've got some pretty good snow that fell in the mountains and also down here across the plains about one to three inches but take a look at some of our temperatures this morning it is cold we started off with single digit lows wind chills that were at about 10 to 20 degrees below zero it is going to gradually warm up skies are clearing we're going to see more sunshine and we'll be in the low teens by about 12 o'clock and then mid to upper teens for highs so that's going to be it denver right around 17 to 20 degrees that's going to put our afternoon high close to our normal low for the day so obviously well below normal early tomorrow morning we're we're starting off with more single digits and low teens, but it's going to be a pretty nice afternoon on Wednesday. Mostly sunny skies and our highs right around 40 degrees tomorrow. So it's a good 20 degree warm up tomorrow. And then we'll tack on another 10 degrees on top of that by Thursday. Thursday highs right around 50 degrees. What an end to the week, you guys. We're starting this week off and we're starting the year off with teens, but we're ending close to 60 on Friday and then pretty mild through the weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. Well, there are some of us who love the snow more than others, and pretty much all dogs love it, right? Yeah, we have to show you something pretty cute. This right here is meteorologist Stacy Donaldson's dog, Izzy, just out there loving that snow. And Figaro belongs to our boss, Dean. Uh, Dean calls him Figgy, and there you can see Dean shoveling the snow off his porch. And there's Figgy catching it all in his mouth. <laughs> that is too cute. Well, this has been your Den Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for joining us. Check back here later for another update and download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. And have a happy new year.